Australian made and owned, High Tech Oils is one of the largest oil blenders in Australia with a truly national profile, supplying an extensive range of oils, coolant, grease, batteries and much more for all businesses and consumer needs. Choose High Tech Oils for peace of mind. Indy circuits, the setting for the opening race of the British Touring Car Championship. Coming up, it's the best of the action. Strap yourself into the world's fastest straight jacket. We are ready to go racing. The 2019 season is underway with a good start by Sutton, a good start by Jordan. Jason Plato struggles for traction away from the line. The rear wheel drive cars out track him, and it is going to be Sutton who has the advantage. Jordan around the outside goes second. Oliphant gets ahead of Plato as well. It's Turkington who goes third. Oliphant is just about fourth. Plato fifth. Then in the front wheel drive box all for Power Max Racing as they go uphill for the first time towards Druid. Ash Sutton leads the way. It is getting wetter, and we know how good the Subaru is in wet conditions. Yeah, well, predictably, the rear wheel drive cars just mug poor Jason Plato on the start he tried to move over but there was no room at all and he's he's the first four cars all rear wheel drive and further back Chris Smiley was coming through the pack getting past Josh Cook so I fear that the slicks on Cook's car are not working that well as Ingram comes under attack from Sam Tordoff and gets himself onto the tail of the works Honda's in the process up towards clearways for the first time Sam Tordoff to the inside of the Toyota Gets a face full of fast food there as he comes through. The Team Toyota GV with Ginsters Corolla is just ahead as they head up towards the end of lap number one. At the end of which, it's going to be Ash Sutton who leads the way over the timing line. He's got an advantage of eight tenths from this fleet of BMW 3 Series. Jordan Turkington Oliphant, fifth is Plato. Camish runs sixth ahead of Neil. Ingram is eighth. Ninth is Tordoff and tenth is Butcher. And Cook has dropped down to 16th from 10th on Slicks. Which tells you something, doesn't it? Dan Robottom's up to 17th in the Cataclean Racing Mercedes. Rob Collard has lost out a little bit off the start. Now, this is Mark Blundell's view. He's also gone backwards by one place, sadly. At the back of the field is Rob Smith. Turning their way now through Druid. Carl Bordley goes a little bit wide. Whoops, has all crossed up there. Ollie Jackson. Bordley tries to gain ground as they come down the hill. And we're hearing that Plato's got a drive-through penalty. Now, I think he was ahead of his line on the box. I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to jinx him, but it looked to me like the front of the car uh, was in front of the white line, the very penalty I talked about prior to the start. That's not yet come up on the timing screen, but the leaders come through, and Jason Plato then loses out to Dan Camish as well, who goes through on the inside. The penalty is confirmed. Plato will get a drive-through. So he may have started at the front, but I'm afraid a penalty comes, and that's Rob Smith, who drops to the back anyway, and he's in more stride coming out of clearways. So Cook is getting back up the order. Uh, Goff on those slicks is in ninth place. There is Cook, and look at Nicholas Hamilton behind him. This is an exceptional showing from Nicholas. Back in the British Touring Car Championship, he's in a new team, but he goes a little bit wide and he's going to lose a place to Matt Simpson there. But Cook now is going to be the man to watch. He's already done the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, we're early on in this race. You know, we're only, uh, only just starting lap six. So they're definitely, definitely going to be the tyres to have. So there he goes on the inside of Senna Proctor, and that will give him now 11th place as he storms through Paddock Hill Bend. But remember that Jack Goff, further up the road, is on slick tyres. It was a very late entry into the championship for Team Hard. There is the Volkswagen look, wriggling its way through the traffic, and Jack Goff could here be on for a great start to the season, but Cook will be with him shortly. Look, they're not far behind the leaders. It's no. not as though they've lost half a lap. They're only 150 yards or so behind, so absolutely slicks the way to go. There is... Sorry. No, I was going to say the wipers are wrong again. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, Josh Cook is only six seconds away from the race leader, just yeah. to back up your point. So, although there's this great battle going on here, which is Jordan defending from Turkington very shortly, the slick shot cars are going to be up with them, but possibly past them. Now, there is Hamilton. He's on wet. He's coming under attack from uh, Robottom and Moffat as over the line another place is gained by Josh Cook. That's going to put him ahead of Jack Goff. So, now Josh Cook leads the slick class, as it were. Yeah, and they're basically able to lap two seconds a lap quicker, even at this stage. 
Aidan Moffat's making some progress. He's on slicks from lower down the order. What about Adam Morgan in the background? I think he was another driver that was thinking about going onto slicks. Yes, he did. So he'll make some progress before the end. And Bobby Thompson has now done the fastest lap of the race. Look at Morgan. Two more places gained there coming out of Drew. He gets past Row Bottom and he gets past uh, Rob Collard as well. Jason Plato, by the way, after the drive through, has dropped way, way down the order as you would anticipate. He's got work to do from 28th now. Yeah, poor Nick Hamilton now struggling with the, oh, the Plato. Plato's in and they're doing a tyre swap. They might as well do that while he's in there. It's clearly going to be the way to go. But uh, yeah, Nick Hamilton tumbling down the order now on his wet tyres. Now, Jason Plato has just lost a lap, hasn't he? Because it's a short circuit, you drop off the lead lap. So let's see what he can salvage out of this and whether anybody else feels they have to pick because that will buy him back some places. There goes Moffat, had a dreadful day yesterday with setup, but now the conditions, changing as they are, are starting to help him. The race order is Sutton, Jordan, Turkington, Olive at the top four. Matt Neal is fifth, Josh Cook is sixth. He's only 3.3 seconds behind the leader. Correction, he's gained another place. Josh Cook is fifth now. So the BTC Racing Honda lights are flashing. The team now with a new owner in Steve Dudman, pickup racer, National Hot Rod Racer. This will be a great start to Steve's involvement in the British Touring Car Championship and Josh racing for this squad for the first time. And look at the way he's going. Yeah. Yellow flag waving as well, there. I mean, it, it would actually be worth uh, some of the front runners stopping for, to change tyres. If they can change tyres without dropping a lap, yeah. and there's a safety car or anything later, they'll close back up. But they're absolutely going to be mugged by all of the slick shot cars before the end of the race. So it's, it's almost, although you could be in the top five position, there's no point in carrying on, really. But, uh, yeah, a great opportunity for Josh Cook and BTC Racing and for Jack Goff and Team Hard, and Jake Hill, who was one of the podium finishes in that wet dry race two last year. He's another one that started on slicks. Here comes Cook for second place against Jordan. Andrew will defend for as long as he can, but it's a bit in vain, isn't it? Because Josh Cook just got the right tyres for the job now. Up the inside he comes, he's going to breeze on by. He lost out on the first lap, getting them up to temperature. Now he's in a class of his own. Yeah, as soon as you get temperature in the rears, it's, uh, it's an easy game. It's a lovely position to be in, because you haven't got to really battle with the cars or take any risk look how much extra grip he's got it's just like taking candy for a baby as he takes the lead and that baby he takes the candy from is the man that took the race win from him on the line last year so you could argue that right to wrong really in josh's mind so josh cook leads the way jack goff is now eighth he's just dropped back in fact behind uh, jake hill who is another of those drivers on the slicks there is jake hill getting in and amongst the bmws the audi is going great guns through on the inside line he goes picks up another place and Goff not far behind, he'll be coming through as well, next of the uh, slick yeah. shot cars. But it's interesting that he's lost out to both Cook and to Hill. They both caught past him. Yeah, they have. Uh, maybe a little bit braver when the tyres were, were cold, but uh, look at that, Jake Hill. He, he, he knew what to do, he did it last year, yeah, yeah. you know, absolutely. And Senna Proctor, who of course was the, the one that won that race, he was starting further up and he started on wet and so just dropped back. So Jake Hill, local driver, if you want to know what the weather's doing around here, you ask Jake, clearly, yes. he's another career here as a weatherman, he goes over the line. So Josh Cook leads from Ash Sutton, Josh has just done the fastest lap of game, incidentally, a 51 and a half. Sutton is second for the moment, but he's going to lose that any moment to Jake Hill, who comes up on the inside line. Can he find a way by not there? But it's inevitable that the Audi will get past. Well, there's, there's no point in defending, you know, really. Um, I mean, Josh, is, uh, uh, Jake is either going to go around the outside or cut back. He's going to go around the outside, but he'll have more traction off the corner, but got on the curves, couldn't quite do it. Just needs to pick his point. There's no point in Ash defending. He might slip it up the inside unless uh, Sutton defends. But even so, you watch, he'll be able to drive off clearways up the inside with so much more traction. There you go. Look at that. Sutton slides off wide. Jake puts the power down. The front wheel drive. Audi just picks up traction and goes. Now, we've still got 13 laps to go as Adam Morgan relieves Colin Turkington of the place. So the slick cars are just going to keep coming forward. Tom Chilton is sixth, Aidan Moffat is seventh, Adam Morgan is now ninth as he goes over the line. And the likes of Tom Ingram are now out of the points. Yeah, exactly. That's why I said they was worth them pitting, yep. because there were so many cars on slicks further back that they were all going to come past them and they'd lose points. So they might as well have pitted and tried to get stay on the lead lap early. The longer the race goes on, the harder that is to do, because the field is spread out. So there you've got the car of Ash Sutton through. And a battle for Sam Osborne, one of the newbies. 
mini racer of seasons past, exploring all of the green bits going through Surtees up towards McLaren, and uh, Cole Porter gets ahead of him. And how's Mark Blundell getting on? He's on the slicks, he's 24th, and he's making a little bit of progress. Uh, that's Nicholas Hamilton ahead of him, who's been dropping down the field as his tyres have gone off, as now Sutton is about to lose out to Chilton. This is for third, fourth, fifth. Look at Aidan Moffat going great guns. Don't forget, he was involved in the battle for the lead in that race last year here, the wet, dry race too, until there was some contact and he lost out. But Moffat, 23rd on the grid, could be on the podium here. The only thing that could save, obviously, the wet guys is if it did rain, yeah. but it would. It just doesn't look like it. There's a few spots in the air, but not real rain. That's the only thing to do it. And, uh, you know, now the slick tyres have got up to, to got their tyres up to temperature, they're fine. Right, there's Chris Smiley trying to gain ground against Dan Kamish, and Mark Blundell in the background is up to 20th. Whoops, there's contact, Smiley gets wrapped around the front of the UASA car and he's in the barriers. And that's exactly the sort of thing that could have caused the safety car. I'm not saying yeah. it will, but exactly the sort of thing that could do it. So Dan Kamish, I think that was, getting involved. That's Rob Smith's MG that's gone a lap down in a couple of offs. Nicholas Hamilton through behind. Here's the replay. Yeah, watch. Mark Blundell's on the left, and oh. just there's a squeeze, and uh, Smiley's in the middle and goes across the front of Kamish. Carl Bordley explores more of the greenery. Yeah, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, into the wall. We've only got six laps to go. Now, Adam Morgan has got past Adam, uh, Aidan Moffat, so that now is for fourth place. Adam Morgan, who had a rotten day yesterday. And there's a driving standards flag for Senna Proctor being shown. But Adam Morgan up into fourth. He's only 1.4 seconds back. There was the move to get past Moffat. Did Bobby Thompson get past as well? He did, but Aidan Moffat goes all rally crossing. Well, there's the race leader. There is Josh Cook. He's only got three laps to go. Look, now he's in the traffic. Now he's lapping some of those people that are on the wrong tyre, as it were. He's going to be coming up to wriggle his way through the back markers. Rob Collard is the first of them, Rob, who was an independence champion in an Astra back in 2003, but having to adapt to front-wheel drive again. And he's not for letting the leader by just yet, that's for sure. Chris Miley's car, you see there on that shot, is parked by the side of the road. Josh Cook flashing his lights. It's not often you get Lappery for the likes of Rob Collard, so he might think he'd have to race for position here. Yeah, I mean, but this is him. why you've got the radios, because the team manager can say, look, the guy behind you is the race leader. Um, you know, that's why radios actually are a good thing to have on the yeah. cars. Well, Josh Cook goes through. Next target will be to put a lap on Nicholas Hamilton. He, in turn, is running on the back of Matt Simpson, who's got Senna Proctor ahead of him. And further up the road is Tom Oliphant, who's fallen back into 22nd place. But what Josh doesn't want to do is find himself moving offline to try and pass a car and then ending up on a, a slam. Oh, and he's had contact with Hamilton! The leader has had contact with Hamilton going into Druids. He's trying to find a way through. Gets by now, coming down towards Graham Hill Bank. He's got time in hand, but he can't waste that time. And he certainly doesn't want any more scares like that. Now, has that car picked up any damage? Looks OK with two laps to go. One more at the end of this. Tell you what, this is the perfect way to blow away the winter cobwebs, isn't it? What yeah. a race we've had. But the thing is, he's got a seven-second gap to Jake Hill, so he doesn't need to take any risks. Out of clear ways they come. This is Oliphant versus Bordley that you're looking at, which is for way, way down the order. Of course, they're a lap down now, but they're still squabbling. So Josh Cook goes through onto the last lap of the race. Remember that he started 10th on the grid on the slick tyre, and he made that gamble, took the choice to go onto the slick. It has proved to be the right way to go as he comes up now to lap Matt Simpson, Alton Park winner last year, and Matt turns across the front. Again, looking for a blue flag, but would say to the back marker, quicker car coming by. Josh doesn't want to have to fight for all of this. He doesn't need to either. No. He's hoping to just cut back and use the traction here. But look, look, Simpson's fighting him, but he's got the inside. He'll be okay. I oh. hope. I hope. There's the blue flag. Jeff Kingston on the radio hopefully will be saying to Matt, let him go, let him go, this is the race leader and Josh will be mindful of this. So near to the chequered flag, he doesn't want to take any risks. The car's queued up behind him, or a lap down anyway. He could just sit there and take the win. Hopefully that's the advice being given over the radio because the first winner of the 2019 Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship season is Josh Cook for BTC Racing, who comes across the line to win another belting race by 2.7 seconds in the end from Jake Hill. He really did get stuck in the traffic. Third goes the way of Tom Chilton. And what about fourth? It is Aidan Moffat just ahead of Adam Morgan. Bobby Thompson sixth for his best result in a touring car. 
Round one of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship is won by Josh Cook. Jake Hill takes second, Tom Chilton third, ahead of Aidan Moffat and Adam Morgan. Bobby Thompson's best ever is sixth, ahead of Stephen Jelly from last on the grid. Eighth, Matt Neal, the first driver home on the wet tyre, ahead of Ash Sutton. And Rory Butcher rounds out the top ten. So, for the championship, it means that effectively it is thanks to your race position plus the point for pole from yesterday. Josh Cook leads by four points from Jake Hill. Tom Chilton third ahead of Aidan Moffat, Adam Morgan and Bobby Thompson. Stephen Jelly seventh. Then it's Ash Sutton, Matt Neal and Rory Butcher rounds out the top ten after round one. Coming up, it's more British touring car action from Brands Hatch. Welcome back to the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit. Coming up, it's the second race of the day in the British Touring Car Championship. Who is it going to be that leads the storm down toward Paddock Hill Bank? Can John Cook get it off pole position? Well, can Jake Hill lead? What about Tom Chilton? Where's the first rear wheel drive car on the grid? Keep an eye to Stephen Jelly then as we get set, ready for round two of the championship. Light for red, who's going to make the best start as the lights go out? We go racing, could get away by Morgan, Jelly's away nicely as well. Moffat tries to get across, Morgan's got nowhere to go and gets stuck in the traffic behind Chilton, so it's going to be Cook that leads the way. Hill second on the outside line, getting a tap from Moffat. That opens the door on the inside for Chilton to come through, but Josh Cook's away by a couple of lengths already. Jelly trying to work his way through traffic, Matt Simpson has gone wide through the grab of the Paddock Hill bend, but it is Josh Cook just in the lead, Hill goes wide, so Chilton gets second, coming through Druids. Yeah, Sutton made a good start, but got pushed out wide at Druids there, as you'd expect with the rear-wheel drive car, but Cook away at the front. On to Cooper straight for the first time, Stephen Jelly gets forced out wide, Ash Sutton gets up past him, Andrew Jordan's made a demon getaway, as you would expect from the rear-wheel drive BMWs, but he's carving his way through, isn't he? And the next target for him is Ash Sutton, who's right on the back of Aidan Moffat as the leaders come through to complete lap number one. Moffat sideways, maybe with an assist. And then Matt Neal tries to get up the inside of Rory Butcher and he gets sideways. And that means that Tom Ingram can get up the inside of him. And Jack Goff looks to try to follow him through. Yeah, uh, Matt Neal a little bit lucky to hold that. That was a nasty wiggle he got on the exit of Clearways. A little bit of rubbing going on down the grid as the cars bunch up. So the race leader, Josh Cook, 1.4 seconds clear at the end of lap one, while Chilton is defending second place from Jake Hill. Morgan fourth, Moffat fifth, Sutton is sixth, Jordan seventh. Good getaway, that, because he was 15th on the grid, so excellent first lap from Andrew Jordan. Really good. So, I mean, obviously, they have an advantage off the line, but uh, the, 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 the field has unravelled nicely for Andrew Jordan on that first lap. But now he's up against another rear-wheel drive car. The next target is Ash Sutton, who's a little bit stuck at the moment behind Aidan Moffat. Here he comes for the inside into clearways. Through goes the Subaru. Can the BMW get past the Mercedes as well? Aidan Moffat tries to brave it out on the outside line. But the Subaru's got the advantage as they power up towards the line now. Jordan tries to get in the draft from the Subaru. Can he get two in one here? Side by side on the inside is Sutton, on the outside is Moffat. And Jordan's going to get past the Mercedes at least. So two down for Aidan Moffat, sadly diving into Paddock. But it's good for Sutton, it's good for Jordan. But Moffat fights back. He's not giving up, is he? He's on the inside into Druids. Can the Mercedes squeeze back up the inside? It's elbows out from the Scotsman. They're still leaning on each other. Moffat's ahead. Jordan's got the inside line for Graham Hill. Ben, we're not done yet. Through he goes. Well, it was good side-by-side -side racing. Moffat was trying to put uh, Jordan out onto the dirt, but it didn't work. Jordan held his ground. Here's Sutton for third, but has that yellow Ford got a problem? Let's just monitor the lap time. Sutton, he's an absolute weapon at the moment, no question about that. He's up to third place. But just watch on the straight, because what I was going to say is, despite the aero work, all the body panels are different on that car, the engine's been improved, it's still absolutely demonstrably the slowest car on the straight. So it's still making up its advantage in its lap time in the corners. You can see how quick it is there through paddock. Brings Jake Hill back into the mix. Adam Morgan is defending from Andrew Jordan. Look, it goes to the outside line into Druids. The Pertec BMW gets past one, does it? Not quite. Adam Morgan just fends him off as they drop downhill. Sutton dives for the inside and goes second. That was a good move, and it's given him second place. But again, he goes wide. Chilton goes wide as well. So Jake Hill gets up the inside in the white-nosed Audi. Hill goes third, Morgan goes fourth, Jordan goes fifth, and Chilton is down into sixth place. Yeah, poor old Tom Chilton got absolutely mugged there. It's a, it, you don't see a lot of moves into that corner, usually because the overtaking car ends up running wide and getting repassed down the straight towards 30s. But 
Uh, Sutton pulled that off perfectly, but of course it totally hung out, jumped to dry, didn't it? Fastest lap of the race, Senna Proctor. Andrew Jordan dives to the inside of Adam Morgan, going into Paddock, there's a gap on the inside, he's going to take full advantage shortly as they head up towards Druid. Jordan has got the inside line, he'll break as late as he dares, and the BMW goes through. Chilton has a nibble at the back of the Mercedes as well, tries to prise open the door and recover some of the lost ground from here a lap ago. Behind them, Bobby Thompson is seventh ish because he goes wide so he's down to nine Stephen jelly now goes ahead of him and also up through there look goes rory butcher interesting now the fastest lap goes to tom ingram that man there just running into a bit of traffic but ingram is quick there's something wrong with chilton's car look he's losing yes. place after place i said a lap or so ago i didn't think all was well and that car again is losing pace on board with ingram now uh, first chance to see a little bit of on board from uh, uh, Tom Ingram in the new Toyota Corolla. He's looking at this and thinking, I must be able to slip up the inside here, at least gain a place from Thompson. If nothing else, yes, he's cleanly through there. But you're right, Chilton's car's not running as well as it should, is it? No, he's losing place after place. He's not staying with the people he's lost ground to, and he is down in ninth spot. And the danger is that he's going to be absolutely swallowed up by this pack in the moment. So. Tom Chilton ahead of Tom Ingram, then Jack Goff, then Senna Proctor, who had done the fastest lap of the race. Uh, Aidan Moffat has dropped back into 13th. His Mercedes was good early on, remember, but that's now faded a little. This is Tom Ingram's view as Dan Robottom there goes a lap down. I think Robottom might be trying to get into the pit lane with a problem and almost came across the front of Chilton. He there. was. Yeah, he was. You called that right, David. He's trying to get in the pits. There's a driving standards flag being shown also now to Aidan Moffat as diving up the inside goes Tom Ingram and Jack Goff tries to go through as well and that door just closed in his face at the wrong moment so there was a bit of a lead between Goff and Chilton but Ingram has gone through and that now gives the Toyota eighth place. That was a good move, we're seeing some good overtaking going on here. Uh, at the front the, the gap is still 3.7 seconds from Cook to Sutton. Remember they're both on the soft tyre and last time round there was, a, there was a, a much quicker lap time from Sutton actually. He was uh, six tenths of a second quicker. So there you've got the BMWs trying to find a way through the Honda traffic just up ahead. Ingram, Chilton, Goff and then Senna Proctor who has still got the fastest lap of the race. Proctor now makes his move on the inside of Goff as they come up towards Clark Curve. Oh, sorry, out of Clark Curve, up towards Paddock and the Subaru should be able to go through on the inside line and it does indeed. So Senna Proctor gains one more spot. That puts him into the top ten now. Now this Tom Ingram getting past Tom Chilton, diving in towards Paddock. Yeah, a great move that, because it is damp on the inside, but he managed to slow the car down. This might just help Josh Cook a little. If they squabble and hold each other up, it might just throw him a lifeline, but it's looking more a case of when, not if. Those two rear-wheel drive cars are going to make the move for the race lead, but first of all, Jordan's going to sort out the Subaru in a straight line. Look at that. Breezes by on the outside line, but Sutton breaks so, so late going into Paddock and he hangs on a second position. Yeah, that was a graphic demonstration of the low drag, long BMW with its great aerodynamics, so much quicker than the, uh, the Subaru at the moment on the straight. Jordan into the back of Sutton going through Druids. We're on lap 14 of 24, downhill they come. Jordan was ahead when they went over the timing line, in fact, but he's still third in the race, but it's three for the race lead now. Cook's advantage, there's no advantage. No. Um, what, what Andy needs to try and do is to cut back on the exit of Druids, um, hoping maybe that Sutton has a go on the inside. Look, he's trying to set it up to cut back and use that superior speed to get it to pass on the inside. He's never going to do it on the outside. Makes the move again. Josh Cook trying to hang on to that race lead. Keeps squabbling, guys, he thinks. They come up side by side over the line again. Jordan was ahead at the timing line. Sutton has the inside line, but he's trapped behind the Honda, but he's still second. Brilliant race, this. Three for the lead. And now you'll see just how wide Josh Cook can make that Honda. Yeah, you see, Andy Jordan knows he's got the fastest car. If you're watching, thinking, why didn't he try and go around the outside? Well, I think the answer was that, uh, uh, oh, Sutton doing that, pull that move. And now Jordan could get up the inside as well. Yes, he will. He'll get up the inside. That was a great move. Sutton's favourite overtaking place. He's created that and uh, using the advantage of the car where it works really well there. Watch this. He faints to the outside, then dives back really late. And it is ever so close. There's millimetres between the bumpers there. And Andy Jordan says thank you very much. This is an extraordinary drive by Andrew Jordan. It's a mega job done. He comes through Clark Curve, 
15th up to second, and he'll have eight laps to go at the end of this in which to try to go for the race lead, and he could do it this time because he's got his nose in front, he's got the car in front, he's got the lead, diving into Paddock Hill, Ben. Andrew Jordan, it is there that leads round two of the championship. He's ahead of Ash Sutton, so Jordan leads in the new BMW 330i M Sport. Second is Sutton, third is Cook, Hill fourth, fifth, Morgan, sixth is Jelly. But Andrew Jordan, sideways at Druids, has stormed his way through to the front. What a drive. No respect to a reputation, is he, Bobby Thompson? He said he belongs up at the front of the grid and he's trying to race with the reigning champion. He loses out, though. And in the background, look, Dan Camish comes up to have a go on the inside of Tom Oliphant. If you're wondering why the uh, Hondas run with a Dunlop sticker at the front rather than the championship sponsor sticker, uh, that was an offer from QuickFit because it would be rather confusing having QuickFit and Halfords on the same car. Uh, and so to avoid any confusion, they're rival companies, they do the same sort of thing. It was an offer made by QuickFit, run Dunlop rather than our stickers, and the team, also grateful of that, have done exactly so. There, it is Jake Hill just ahead of Morgan, but now look, Josh Cook losing more and more places. Is this the weight telling or is there something more sinister? No, I think it's a combination of weight and tyre. Um, you know, that soft tyre isn't the perfect tyre, I don't think, for these conditions, but of course, he and Sutton started further up, so they're, they're now sort of you eking that out. So Josh Cook suddenly is struggling with those tyres and the weight, isn't he? Because having prevailed for so long up front, now he's lost a whole heap of time and places, and Tom Ingram will be up with him in a moment as well to try and find a way by. Not much love loss between those two, so it's going to be interesting to see what sort of defence the Honda is able to put up. But Andrew Jordan is leading by nearly three seconds from 15th on the grid, through the traffic, into the lead, pull away. Jordan leads, Sutton is second and way out wide goes Adam Morgan. Yeah, left the door open now for Jelly to get take advantage, but I think, you know, although there's a tyre uh, discrepancy here, it is still showing that 54 kilos is enough maximum ballast. You don't need the 75 to have an effect on the race. And uh, so I think the change is probably starting to show itself as being the right thing to do. Colin Turkington's view, and ahead is Matt Neal. So this is 12th and 13th, they are squabbling over. Matt Neal wants to get past Jack Goff in the Team Hard Volkswagen CC, taking over the car, earmark for Mike Bushell initially. Dan Camish is at the back of this little group as well, taking Thompson with him. The race leader, Andrew Jordan, has just started, lap number 21. He leads by three and a half seconds now, with Stephen Jelly up into fourth place at the expense of Adam Morgan, as we'd seen at Paddock, and Tom Ingram is into the top six at the expense of Josh Cook. So there's lots of shuffling still going on within the top six. Tom Chilton trying to drag a result out of the Ford Focus. Talking about people that normally drag results out of cars, Jason Plato in 21st place. I honestly thought he'd have got a bit higher up than that. Yeah, so would I. He's on that soft tyre as well. Yeah, true. Um, and again, maybe that hasn't worked too well. No, into the back of Ollie Jackson comes Sam Tordoff. Looked like some concertinaing into the corner there. Hill attacking, defending. He's got Jelly crawling all over the back of him. Jelly dives up the inside and he goes third. Great move. Stephen Jelly goes through, but he goes wide. Jake Hill gets past him, Morgan gets past him as well, and Tom Ingram tries to make a move against the BMW, so that was one up and three down. You know when I said, normally when you try that move, you run out wide and everybody overtakes you? That's exactly why people don't do it. Uh, uh, Sutton managed to put it off, but that, that soft tyre is really not working at the moment. I think the conditions are too cold for it, and uh, Sutton's really struggling, just like the other soft tyre runners. Over the timing line, Sutton has got Hill and Morgan behind him. Jake Hill thinks about the inside line there. Can he go through? Not this time. What about Ingram making more progress before the very end? We've got two laps to go. Jordan's away by six seconds now. Sutton trying to put the Subaru everywhere as Morgan goes third. Does he on the inside line? Yes, he does. Morgan third up at Druids. He had an awful day yesterday in qualify. Really, this has been a major achievement by the Sicily team to get the cars back up near the pointy end of the grid. And Adam Morgan carving his way through the field. He's always been a good racer. Fourth is Hill, and Ingram is looking for another place before the end. There's going to be one more lap to run at the end of this. Yeah, I said, uh, come, I said to you this morning, didn't I? Come race day, I reckon we'll see Adam Morgan, a different man. He's got the inside, he's got the inside. The Subaru is slow on the straight, but wiggles and stays in front. Difficult one for Morgan now. If he pulls out, he opens the door for Hill to get up the inside, which is what he's trying to do there. But the, uh, the Subaru is a real mobile chicane at the moment. It's slow on the straight and it's got no grip in the corners. So they're all just falling over each other in the background. Apart from that, it's doing really well. And Ash Sutton doing a great job of defending as Morgan gets into the back of him, goes wide, Hill gets up the inside, he goes through. 
but he's alongside Sutton coming down the hill. He's on the wrong line, so Morgan will get back up to third. Will he on the inside? Yes. Hill gets run out wide this time around. Tom Ingram tries to make a move. We're on the last lap of the race. Way out up front is Andrew Jordan, who's nearly started race three. He's so far ahead. Andrew Jordan's going to win round two of the championship, it seems. But what about second place? Andrew Jordan does win round two of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship for second. Take a big, deep breath, because here comes the battle pack. Ash Sutton is just ahead of Adam Morgan, with Jake Hill alongside him. Can Morgan get ahead on the line? It's a virtual dead heat between the two of them, and Morgan did it by 13 thousandths of a second. Adam Morgan second, Ash Sutton third. Fourth, Jake Hill. Fifth, Tom Ingram. Sixth, Stephen Jelly. Josh Cook was seventh ahead of Rory Butcher, Tom Chilton and Sarah Proctor. Andrew Jordan's winning margin, 9.7 seconds, and a change for the result for second place because Ash Sutton has been given second position by 22,000. The timing screen has had a think about it. The transponders have been checked. Sutton gets second. Andrew Jordan wins round two of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship from Ash Sutton, just ahead of Adam Morgan. Jake Hill, fourth ahead of Tom Ingram, then Stephen Jelly, sixth. Seventh goes the way of Josh Cook with maximum weight ahead of Rory Butcher, Tom Chilton, and tenth to Senna Proctor. The championship then, Josh Cook leads Jake Hill by just a point after two races. Ash Sutton, third, Adam Morgan is fourth, and Andrew Jordan's win puts him fifth. Tom Chilton is next ahead of Stephen Jelly and then Bobby Thompson, Rory Butcher nine, and it's Tom Ingram rounding out the top ten. Stay tuned for more British touring car action from Brands Hatch. Welcome back to the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit. Coming up, it's the third race of the day in the British Touring Car Championship. Light to red, round three of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship is go. Great start by Stephen Jelly. He's passed one, two, three already. The gap is narrowing. He goes to the outside of the race lead of Santa Proctor. Stephen Jelly's going to attack for the race lead, going into Paddock. Proctor on the inside. Jelly second. Brilliant start. Matt Neal is third, and Jelly's going to attack Proctor on the run up the hill. He's got the inside line. Subaru just ahead. Stephen Jelly gets into the side of it. They lean on each other. That forces Proctor out wide. And it's Stephen Jelly who leads, coming out of Druids. What a brilliant start by Stephen from last on the grid in race one to leading away race three. Fantastic. And that going around, I think, is Santa Proctor because he's off the road. There was contact in the midfield. It is indeed Santa Proctor facing the wrong way. And that's going to drop him to the very bottom of the order at the end of lap one, which will be led over the line by Stephen Jelly. Everybody else trying to be second as they come through Clark Kirk for the first time. There's a bit of damage on the rear of Andrew Jordan's car, we understand. And at the end of the opening lap, Stephen Jelly for Team Parker Racing leads the way. Second is Matt Neal. Chilton is third, but only just because right with him is Butcher. Ingram is fifth. Cook sixth. Seventh is Hill. Eighth is Sutton. Ninth is Jordan. And tenth is Adam Morgan. There's some cold tyres on the back of uh, some of these front wheel drive cars. Jake Hill was absolutely hurling it round clearways, sideways, controlling the side. Looked like a rally cross car. So at the end of the opening lap, seven tenths clear was Stephen Jelly. He's trying to get away and build this lead. He's a double winner in the championship of years past. Can he score a victory here? Matt Neal is going after him. Tom Chilton is third, and Tom Ingram is up into fourth at the expense of Rory Butcher. And Nicholas Hamilton is on the grass in the background. He might just have had a bit of contact in the rear there, but uh, we have a drive-through penalty for a false start for Matt Simpson who is way back in 22nd place anyway, and Adam Morgan's on the attack, look up the inside of Andrew Jordan, and he's going to lose out also, seemingly here to Colin Turkington, who is right on the back of the Mercedes. Yes, there's a lot of action further back on the field. I didn't see what Matt Simpson did on the start. He was fairly well back, but uh, Andy Jordan's being really roughed up in this race, isn't he? He's got the back bumper hanging off, and they're absolutely all over the back of him. Someone going through the gravel at the very back of the field there, through Paddock, not sure who that was. It was one of the Power Max cars, it's Collard. Rob Collard, and he's got a damaged right rear suspension, that's why. So there might have been somebody else involved in that, potentially. As you're on board with Turkington, and he's on the tail of Morgan, and that looks like Carl Bordley's car has got a bit of damage as well. He's had a fairly trying first weekend of this year's championship. Debuted at Knock Hill last year, but he's in for a full season. Turkington chases Morgan then. Up towards the end of lap number three, they come. It's Jelly to Neil with the gap having been eight tenths, only seven tenths this time. Chilton is third, and he had done the fastest lap of the race until Josh Cook went through, went even quicker. And there's the damage on the back of Jordan's car. 
Yeah, let's hope that uh, doesn't get any worse or necessitate a, a pit stop to remove it. It looks fairly well attached at the moment, so let's hope it stays on. Sam Trodoff's on the attack as well, though. Look up into 17th place, and there's more to come as they drop downhill once more. Chilton's definitely looking pretty fiery in that third place. He's all over the back of Matt Neal's car, looking for an opportunity. You've just been waiting for those soft tyres on Matt Neal's car to hopefully degrade like they did in race two. Although, I have to say, I spoke to Dynamics, and they were very confident they could do the job in, uh, in, in, in on that soft tyre. This is looking back at Senna Proctor. Gets a bit of a slide on. Whether he had an additional tag, he had a bit of a slide, didn't he? And then it just went round. Um, whether that was cold tyres or contact, I'm not sure. And that's Carl Bordley sideways into uh, Rob Collard. Yeah, absolutely. He was trying to hold the tighter line and it just let go and slid out wide into Rob. And behind Ash Sutton, Andrew Jordan's done a best lap of the race and then Colin Turkington went even faster. So the BMW's proving that they are very quick, just in case you haven't spotted that in races one and two. They're underlining the evidence again. Well, I was looking forward to seeing what uh, Turkington and uh, Oliver... Oh, up the inside for the lead. Matt Neal, his favourite overtaking place at Brands. Has he looked after those soft tyres enough on these uh, first few laps to, to keep it going? This looks pretty pretty good because we're already on lap seven. And uh, earlier in the second race, the, the soft tyres were going off earlier than that. But Matt Neal's finding pace, so it looks like they are working on the Dynamics car. Stephen Jally tried to fight back. Can he get the lead once more from Matt Neal, or is Matt going to be able to build the advantage? And then what happens to Chilton? Can he find a way past the BMW and bag second place? The next long line of cars, look, headed by Tom Ingram, then it's Butcher, then it's Hill, who's had a really good day, and he's ahead of Josh Cook, which would put him potentially ahead in the championship if things stay as they are. Josh Cook is there in seventh spot as the leaders work their way through Surtees up towards McLaren, and Chilton is on the attack. Is there a gap on the inside? Yes, there is. The Ford goes through. Tom Chilton goes second as Jelly gets forced out wide. So Tom Chilton up to second spot, just about. He's got his nose in front as they head up towards the line. Matt Neal is building the gap. Chilton second. He's got the inside line all the way to Paddock, but the BMW on the outside will try to break later, but it's not going to happen. Chilton it is, who goes second into Paddock Hill Band. Yeah, an excellent move by Chilton. He timed that perfectly on the cutback up the inside, didn't run uh, deep on the apex, so that was a, a classic manoeuvre up the inside into clearways, and they uh, pulled that off really well. Now, Tom Ingram is not getting away, is he, from Rory Butcher? Ingram's got 30 kilos on board. Butcher's only got 12. And Ingram now, look, he's got them all stacked up behind him. Look, that line is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. There is Butcher, there is Hill, there is Cook, there is Sutton, Jordan, Turkington and Oliphant all queued up behind the Toyota. Yeah, Jordan's now at the front of this BMW train, but he's on the soft tyre, so he may get the instruction from the team, look, don't hold the others up, they are quicker. Here's on board with Colin behind Jordan. Is that Jordan moving over and letting uh, Colin round the outside? I think it is. He's indicating, isn't he? He'd indicated yeah. that he was going to get out of the way. So Andrew Jordan makes the message clear, pulls out of the way, takes one for the team and lets Turkington go by. Now, let's see whether he'll do the same for Tom Oliphant. As there, Ingram defends from Butcher. Then it's Hill, then it's Cook, then it's Sutton. And Turkington is right onto the back. As now, Rory Butcher lunges up the inside. That's for fourth place, and he's got the gap going into Graham Hill. Bandy will go through. Will he take Hill with him? Not necessarily. Three wide. Ingram tries to brave it out. In the middle, he's Butcher, and Hill's going to try to get past both of them. He's certainly got past Ingram. He's on the outside line up towards Clearways. There's a lean between him and Butcher. Ingram comes back on the inside line. So Rory Butcher does gain a pace, but great racing, all of this. And now, look, not only is Jake Hill alongside Ingram on one side, but Josh Cook's looking for a gap on the other. It's like a NASCAR race, isn't it? There's inches between them, side by side. Into Paddock. Ingram, amazingly, has fended off Hill, who leaves the door open for Josh Cook, who's going to go through Jake Hill, through the gravel and back on again. Loses a place, loses momentum. So, Ingram just hands on to that fifth place, but now it's Josh Cook who is right up behind him. Then nose to tail as they drop downhill. Sutton's on the attack as well, and there's contact between him and Hill, and off goes Sutton into the tyres. A little rub coming down the hill, and it's got serious consequences for Ash Sutton because there is the Subaru off the road into the barriers, and Jake Hill's got damage on the front as well. Yeah, now that is serious consequences. Actually, the damage is on the back, look. Oh, yes. The, 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 that is serious consequences. It's loss of points, big loss of points for Sutton at this point. He's got moving again, but I don't think he'll uh, 
feature in the results. OK, so drama coming downhill on lap number 10. That's why on lap number 11, the leaders go through Paddock. And now Chilton is taking the fight to Matt Neal, who's had his tenure of office up front. Chilton is on the attack. But look, Stephen Jelly is staying with them. There is Ash Sutton's Subaru. Well, that's some of it. And it's coming up towards the end of the lap. So Ash Sutton's dropped a long way back now. He'll be 24th, just ahead of Nicholas Hamilton as the remains of the Labour come across the line. So Ash Sutton's day has certainly not improved. This is what happened, Tim. Talk us through it. Uh, coming out, oh, there just wasn't enough room, and uh, Sutton stayed on the sort of middle to the right hand or to the left hand side of the uh, the track, rather than maybe moving back over to the right, which is normal line. Jake just misread that, and there was contact at the back. Now, this is the lead battle. Matt Neal leads round three of the championship. Behind him, Tom Chilton. Behind him, Stephen Jelly, who may have lost that lead. He may have lost second, but he's not falling away, is he? He is staying with them waiting to see what might happen to Matt Neal's soft tyre as the race wears on. He's still in the mix. Yeah, well, Matt is now lapping seven-tenths slower than his best lap, so that's a, a sure indication that the uh, uh, the soft tyre is not working as well, and uh, it's now just a case of biding their time for Chilton and Jenny. That's Ollie Jackson and Sam Tordoff who've had a moment up at Druids, and Ollie Jackson's car looks a bit battled. Scott and works. Big, big lose. That's Jake Hill off at Graham Hill Bend. He'd already picked up damage from a lap ago. Oh. And for the race, Lee Chilton up the inside of Matt Neal. Where to look next? Tom Chilton goes through. He's made the move and he's got the race lead. Yeah, well, we missed that. Uh, but I'm guessing it was a very similar move to the one he pulled on Stephen Jelly up the inside and then using the superior uh, traction off the corner. That was a good move. He's driven very well. Tom Chilton bided his time, made the moves. This is a classy performance. Race is being led by Tom Chilton and Ash Sutton is being given the meatball flag, the black and orange mechanical warning flag because of the damage. Andrew Jordan's escaped in the BMW for the moment, but look now, Chilton up front getting away. Can Jelly get past Matt Neal and go after him? And look behind them because Rory Butcher fourth, it's creeping into the equation. Yeah, he is. This is uh, Sutton's car in to remove what's hanging off the car, but there's, there's no way he's going to get points here. There's no, I mean, it, it, there's no point. This, this is, the, is the move, a great move. Oh. A little bit of contact as Matt Neal shut the door, but that's a move that Matt has pulled himself many, many times over the years. That was a good move. A driving standards flag also to Mark Blundell is being prepared. Right, second, third and very nearly fourth getting themselves together because, look, Rory Butcher is getting closer and closer and closer all the time in the Cobra Sport AMD Auto Aid RCIB Insurance Honda to give it its full title. Stephen Jelly for the moment is a bit stuck behind Matt Neal. And he's being reeled in by Butcher, so there are three of them now, all disputing second place. Yeah, and, uh, well, Stephen's got to make some decision. He's either got to really attack, maybe forcibly, or he's going to be under attack from Rory himself. But clearly, Matt Neal is the, the slower car on those tyres. He rides the curve into Paddock. Stephen Jelly looking for a way by as they head uphill. Championship leader coming into this race, Josh Cook, being monstered by the reigning champion, Colin Turkington. This is for sixth place now, as Cook has a look at the inside of the Toyota. Tom Ingram is just ahead of him. This is actually a mirror image of what's happening in front, in that... that uh, oh, oh, we've had a big slide. Have we had contact? We had uh, uh, Neil sideways looking at the front of Jelly's car. Look what's happened there. Butcher's now trying to get in immediately. That's the way to strike, as Jelly got a puncture. He's run wide. I think he has. His car's bobbling, it's hobbled. He's got something wrong on the front. And uh, Butcher said, thank you very much, he's through to second. So Rory Butcher goes through, here is the answer. Let's see if there was contact. Jelly to the inside, bang. Yeah, it was never really up the inside. We've got new driving standards uh, advice being given to the drivers this weekend, and it means that you must be up alongside the B pillar uh, before the corner to claim it. But this is what I'd say, we've got a mirror image of what was happening in front here with Ingram on the soft tyre trying desperately um, to hold off Cook, Turkington, Oliphant and Jordan. Cook up the inside, goes through. Josh Cook gets ahead of Ingram now. Turkington tries to attack on the inside line. He's alongside the Toyota. He's going to go through, is he? And look, Tom Oliphant is right there behind him. The two BMWs as one go through. You've got this giant eight-wheel three series. So close, are they? But Ingram fights back. Take that, he says. Goes up on the inside line. Elbows out. Ingram is still trying to attack as best he can. Adam Morgan is next in the queue. 
Ingram might lose out in a straight line here against the aero-friendly BMWs, but he's certainly fighting hard. He is. I mean, uh, uh, I thought the BMWs were doing a great job of sort of leading, following each other through. They're still side by side, and Adam Morgan could get up the inside of Oliphant here. That's Andy Jordan, Jordan off. off in the background. Um, but yeah, that's uh, Oliphant's now got to do it all again. Yeah, he's worse off because Morgan's got past him, hasn't he? And now the Mercedes is on the attack as they come downhill. Oliphant to the inside, there's a Toyota in the way, there's a Mercedes alongside him. Contact between the two. Ingram is still ahead. Aidan Moffat is coming back into the mix as well now. And Tom Oliphant blasts through, back on the inside of Adam Morgan, retakes that place. Ingram's doing a great job yes. defending, isn't he? He's driving a, a good defensive drive, making the most of it, but not easy. The gap at the front, 3.8 seconds. Now, Stephen Jelly back on the tail of Matt Neal. So we have that concern about had he got a problem yeah. when Matt Neal went past him. Was that Stephen Jelly giving the place back to try and avoid a penalty? Yeah, good call, David. It probably was because that's another little change to the regulations that if you gain an advantage through contact, you have to be seen to give the place back. Oh, he's looking at exactly the same <laughs> manoeuvre there. You think he'd learn. But you have to give the place back or else you could suffer an increased penalty in the yeah. bus afterwards. Drivers, they, uh, Alan, felt, Alan Gow felt, were taking the risk of maybe having positions re 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 uh, redressed and, and fighting out the bus rather than a greater penalty, which could now be implied. So I think you're absolutely right, he gave that place back. And that's why he's still effectively, therefore, up with Matt Neal as there. Look, Chris Smiley tries to get up past Aidan Moffat. Chris Smiley's making good progress out of all of this, don't forget. He started 20th on the grid and he's trying to break into the top 10 now, which he should do as he comes across the timing line. There is Ingram, he is 7th, Oliphant is 8th, Morgan is 9th, Smiley 10th, and Oliphant again tries to prise open the door, he's got the inside line. On the other side is Adam Morgan, his teammate of last year, and Oliphant goes through. Look at Smiley, dives up the inside, he's got past one, he's got past two, great opportunistic move. Yeah, finally Oliphant managed to open the door and get the switch back, and that was all he needed. But yeah, good opportunist driving by Smiley, great racer now. Now, what can Oliphant do? Can he break away? And uh, he's got Smiley close behind. Morgan's under attack from Jack Goff. Now there is the meatball flag for Andrew Jordan. We saw that rear damage early on. There's only four laps to go. The flag has now come out. So, late race, Andrew Jordan is going to be affected. It's probably worse as well, though, because he's been through the gravel, of course, and perhaps done even more damage. Neil versus Jelly. This is for third place. Rory Butcher, don't forget, in second, is heading for his best ever finish in a touring car race. And Tom Chilton is the race leader. So, we're going to have potentially three different winners out of the three races to kickstart the quick fit British Touring Car Championship season, but can we get Stephen Jelly onto the podium? That would be a popular result, and it's not for the ones who try. No, he's not. He's just got to find a space to do it cleanly. I'm not sure where the advantage, if any, there really is in the BMW 1 Series over Matt Neal's car. Doesn't appear to really be on the brakes. It appears to be just in traction off the corner, but we know the 1 Series is not as quick in a straight line as uh, the new BMW, and actually that fact that Honda is quick in a straight line, so it's, it's a difficult uh, conundrum to try and find a, play, a way through. And Stephen Jelly also will not want to perhaps risk everything and gain a place because he just wants a good finish. It's been a, a challenging weekend, starting race one from the very back of the grid, and he's going to have a look on the inside, but Matt Neal knows exactly what he is doing in a touring car. As in the meantime, Colin Turkington comes up to have a go at Josh Cook. Turkington, by the way, has done the fastest lap of the race, illustrating again the pace of the new BMW. Andrew Jordan is coming to the pits with the rear damage, incidentally, in the uh, Pertec Racing BMW. And Turkington shadows Josh Cook, the championship leader, coming into this third race in towards 30s. And look at the train of cars there are behind uh, Tom Ingram. He's got an absolute bevy of cars all ganging up behind him now. If he survives this, he'll have done ever so well. So it's Adam Morgan who is directly behind him, then Jack Goff, then Jason Plato on the inside line to try and get up past Bobby Thompson. And next in the queue is Dan Camish. Jason Plato is about to gain one more spot out of all of this and go 13th over the line. Ingram defends, elbows out, Adam Morgan can't find a way past him there, coming into Paddock, they ride the kerbs, mow the lawn on the inside, and straight away Ingram has to move across the road to try to defend. Through Druids, all concertina and we've got, what, six in a line here. All of this, don't forget, is for tenth place. Yeah, and what, what Tom's hoping is that they fall over each other behind him and he can just stay out in front. Sam Osborne's car is that MG parked on the side of the circuit, so yellow at Graham Hill, Bando overtaking, which helps Ingram a little bit. 
to see the damage on the rear of the Toyota. Morgan has another look at the inside, gets a face full of the rear of the Toyota Corolla, nose to tail, they come into Clark Curve. But the leader, Tom Chilton, is on his final lap. Their second is Rory Butcher, who is only 2.3 seconds back, and he's catching. But what yeah. about third? No, he's just controlling that gap. It's going to be a great result for Tom Chilton and Motor Base. It'll be an excellent result as well for AMD and, uh, and, and Rory Butcher. It'll be great to see. He'll get his best result ever in the BTCC. Yeah. And there is Matt Neal, who has got damage at the back of the car, big damage at the back of the car, so Stephen Jelly should be ahead of him. And now that the rest are all going to come pouring past, there is Josh Cook going through. I'll give you Matt Neal's final place when he gets to the line, but more importantly, round three is going to be won by Tom Chilton. Over the line he goes, the motor base board wins at Brands Hatch, Rory Butcher takes second, a career best in the BTCC, and Matt Neal's car is disintegrating around in the smoke pouring off the rubber. Stephen Jelly is third, provisionally. Who is going to be fourth is Josh Cook. Fifth, Turkington. Sixth, Oliphant. Seventh is Smiley. And eighth is Matt Neal. Let's have a look. Here we go. Coming through Paddock Hill Bend. Jelly gets a good run through the corner. Oh, Matt Neal just it broke. It yeah. broke at the back. That may have been a legacy of the contact they had earlier at Graham Hill because it's the same, same corner, isn't it? Round three of the British Touring Car Championship is won by Tom Chilton by just under two seconds from Rory Butcher. Stephen Jelly taking third and Josh Cook fourth ahead of Colin Turkington and then Tom Oliphant. Seventh, Chris Smiley with Matt Neal eighth, Aidan Moffat ninth and Tom Ingram rounds out the top ten. So three races in, what does this do to the championship? It's still Josh Cook, the championship leader, by a point from Tom Chilton. Stephen Jelly is third in the title race, ahead of Rory Butcher and Adam Morgan. Jake Hill sixth, seventh Ash Sutton, Andrew Jordan is eighth, Matt Neal ninth, and Tom Ingram in tenth. What odds would you have got for that being the top ten at the start of the day? The next round of the championship is at Donington Park.